Smart Dust, The Future of Involuntary Treatment of the Public By Waking Times Smart dust is a name given to extremely small computing particles, refit chips, or other very small technologies. A popular article from Extreme Tech describes it in the headline, Smart Dust, a complete computer that's smaller than a grain of sand. An article from War is Boring is titled Future Military Sensors Could Be Tiny Specks of Smart Dust New Technologies Allow for Extremely Small, and Ubiquitous, Military Sensors. A paper from University of California, San Diego describes smart dust. The term smart dust originally referred to miniature wireless semiconductor devices made using fabrication techniques derived from the microelectronics industry. These devices incorporate sensing computing and communications in a centimeter-sized package. It is promoted as an eventuality, that smart dust will cover streets and buildings to identify people, that people will have smart dust in their bodies, and other things in mainstream television and media. They paint a utopian, blissful picture of it. However, the history of entities involved in creating smart dust show a different perspective. The same entities who create destructive technology, drones, surveillance technology, technology for warfare, are involved with its creation, military industrial complex players, from the RAND Corporation to Hitachi, to DARPA and their collaborators in academia. As with all technology, the people who wield it determine whether it's used for the benefit of, or against the common people. The concepts for smart dust emerged from a workshop at RAND in 1992 and a series of DARPA ISOT studies in the mid-1990s due to the potential military applications of the technology. The work was strongly influenced by work at UCLA and the University of Michigan during that period. The RAND Corporation has been involved in morally reprehensible warfare, think tank activity and strategy in particular, for several decades. They were involved in nuclear war strategy, disrespecting the lives of everyone on the planet in scenarios where nuclear bombs would be detonated to retaliate against Russia at the expense of all life on Earth. Such apocalyptic scenarios are explored in many RAND publications, and in 2016, they examined possibilities of war with China. RAND has published several papers about spraying the skies involuntarily treating whole populations with chemicals to geoengineer the weather. One is titled Governing Geoengineering Research, a Political and Technical Vulnerability Analysis of Potential Near-Term Options. With the recent announcement that the U.S. government is looking into geoengineering research, it looks like an overt, involuntary treatment of the American people with geoengineering material is coming soon. They act as if they aren't already spraying us. RAND is likely to be involved with complex science used for control over populations, as implied in a publication of theirs. It reads, Beyond the agricultural and industrial revolutions of the past, a global technology revolution is currently changing the world. This book discusses the broad, multidisciplinary, and synergistic trends in this revolution, including genomics, cloning, biomedical engineering, smart materials, Agile manufacturing, nanofabricated computation devices, and integrated microsystems. A central, historical player in Japan's military industrial complex, Hitachi developed some of the smallest smart dust particles ever disclosed to the public, a full 15 years ago with the announcement of the 0.4 mm x 0.4 mm external antenna microchip. As far back as 2001, Smart dust was this small. It is depicted in this popular meme still circulating on social media. Considering how far back the technology goes, how small is the smallest smart dust today? Could it be small enough to perform functions inside the human body, or be involuntarily sprayed on us without us realizing it? Considering what we don't know about the inner workings of DARPA, the institutes of technology so influential to modern warfare, and other historically dangerous institutions, what technology similar to smart dust could they be pioneering or even experimenting on us with? Understanding the history of recent human experimentation is necessary to understand the probability of involuntary treatment with smart dust. A paper from the University of California, San Diego is titled Smart Dust, Self-Assembling, 
self-orienting photonic crystals of porous C. It is about micrometer-sized one-dimensional photonic crystals of porous C that spontaneously assemble, orient, and sense their local environment. A June 2016 Singularity Hub article is titled Smart Dust is Coming, New Camera is the Size of a Grain of Salt. The article reads, In a new University of Stuttgart paper published in Nature Photonics, scientists describe tiny 3D printed lenses and show how they can take super sharp images. Each lens is 120 millionths of a meter in diameter, roughly the size of a grain of table salt. And because they're 3D printed in one piece, complexity is no barrier. Any lens configuration that can be designed on a computer can be printed and used. The lenses, which included single, double, and triple optical elements, were printed on strands of optical fiber and standard digital sensors like those used in cameras. The researchers believe future applications include less invasive endoscopic medical imaging of the body, even injection into the brain and nearly invisible camera sensors on miniature drones or robots. This will lead to a plethora of novel devices with tremendous impact on biotechnology, medical engineering, and safety, security monitoring, they wrote. Injecting smart dust into a person's brain for endoscopic medical imaging is less invasive. Using bacteria encapsulated in electrospun nanofibers to treat water and enrich soil for crops is being discussed as well. In powerful academic institutions such as Israel Institute of Technology, geoengineering researchers suspect that the tiny, metallic looking particles found after chemtrail spraying may be a form of smart dust. People theorize that smart dust may be sprayed on us, and that a similar technology may even be forcefully administered to take control of the human body. Some question whether Gwent hours could be used in conjunction with smart dust type technology. While it's not completely proven that people are being involuntarily treated with smart dust, if we want to anticipate the future and avoid a dystopian nightmare, we'd be wise to examine all the possibilities, because in the world today, technology that was heralded as revolutionary and life-saving is often the complete opposite. Once the general public is coaxed into accepting something as life-saving, from that point forward, people who criticize the science are ostracized. This is not science as in, the scientific method of critically testing the effects of something and searching for evidence, but it's dogma about technology. Vaccines are a perfect example. Once people became normalized to them, and people who questioned them were denigrated as conspiracy theorists, a threshold was crossed which makes it difficult to reach anyone with alternative info about them. Powerful institutions and their mad scientists are trying to cross this threshold of normalization with geoengineering as we speak, and they will try it with smart dust. While people who observe the chemtrail spraying in the skies have seen rain tests full of aluminum, and have seen the geoengineering patents for spraying aluminum, have been cast aside as conspiracy theorists for saying spraying is occurring. The mainstream media and mad science institutions are now openly calling for spraying the skies to combat climate change. One day, the government could declare we will now spray, and those who say your health could be damaged by their geoengineering spray might be called crazy in a future where people are normalized to it. Those who insist other chemicals and things are being sprayed on us under the guise of overt geoengineering could be called paranoid once the threshold of normalization is reached with the public. To remain in control over what technology is administered to us, because governments are pushing harder every day to make vaccines mandatory, breathing in particles sprayed in the sky, and other health-damaging things, we have to not allow public opinion to reach that threshold of willfully accepting involuntary treatment. With the passing of California's SB 277, Children attending school are now required to get a long list of vaccines. According to SB277.org, SB277 eliminates a parent's right to exempt their children from one, some, or all vaccines, a risk laden medical procedure including death. In 2016, California parents will be forced to give their children more than 40 doses of 10 federally recommended vaccines. This open-ended vaccine mandate allows the state of California to add any additional vaccines they deem necessary at any time. 
The only exemption available is a medical exemption that doctors deny to 